Hello and welcome back to the channel from a not so sunny Blackpool. As you can see, it's very windy, it's very cold. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to review five separate hotels. Four of them I've never been to before and one is a revisit. The reason for the revisit is because they've dropped the breakfast off the menu. And I'm a little bit curious to see what they have to offer for the price. Anyhow, the reason for these videos is because I've recently done five four-star hotels from Benidorm and the viewers seem to like them videos so I thought I'll come to Blackpool and do similar videos. So the first on the list of these five hotels from Blackpool is this one directly behind me. It's a huge one, look at the size of that. It's called the Imperial Hotel. I booked in for one night Let's get checked in and see what this hotel here in Blackpool has to offer for the price. Right, all checked in. Room 203. Room 203. The thing about these old buildings is they do seem to have a lot of creaky floorboards. It is a grade two listed building. Checking was dead simple, just had to sign my name away as usual and put down my address. Uh, it took a couple of minutes. So room 203 on the second floor. Let's have a look at the room. That is one huge bed. It is two single beds put together. Now I did book a single room, but they've upgraded me to this room. I did ask why, and apparently because it's house of season, it is February. They upgrade the guests to a better standard room, um, just for more comfort. Apparently they do this quite often, so it's nothing unusual to be upgraded out of season when the rooms are available. So, let's have a little look at the rest of the room. Flat screen TV, a little bit dated, but it's still a TV. Remote control, that cupboard doesn't open for some reason. A drawer. Some of these drawers contain Bibles in some hotels. I haven't seen one for a while. Um, there's the hairdryer. A couple of glasses in there. So I do have my hairdryer. Telephone, mirror. Let's do the kettle check. That seems okay. A selection of tea, coffee and biscuits. A corner chair. Two bedside tables. Let's check the other one. Does anyone remember when hotel rooms used to have the Bible in the side uh, cupboard? They used to always put a Bible in the side drawer of the bed. I haven't seen that for a while in hotels. I'll do the bed check in a minute. Let's have a little look through here. Oh my God, I haven't seen one of these for years. 
people who don't know what this is especially the younger generation this is called a trouser press believe it or not I haven't seen one in a hotel for a long time and then we have a built-in double mirror front wardrobe original features of the hotel built into the wall iron and board an iron and a safe nice to see that it is screwed to the wall I've seen so many safes in hotels that you could just walk away with hangers and some shelf storage let's just check the iron Could do with a bit of a clean and now the ensuite bathroom oh, I like this touch that's nice the built-in marble sink with the mirror oh that's quite nice the noise is your um, ventilation fan blowing away and the marble feature continues round the bath oh that's quite nice and it looks very clean as well heated tower rail oh that is hot <laughs> that is very hot and of course your toilets no window in the bathroom I've noticed stand back and get a wider angle view of the bathroom if I can it's a narrow bathroom but that's quite a nice bathroom I do like this feature though the marble sink and one last thing to check of course is the bed don't have uh, pillow protectors on but the pillows look very clean they are very clean Now they have a mattress topper. Let's have a look at the mattress. The mattress looks fairly clean. You can't tell in this light, but it does look. Let's take that off. Yeah, that looks fine. So let's check out the rest of the hotel.
just looking around the hotel, it's vast, it's huge, and it does have several function rooms. I've got access to a couple of them, so I'm going to show you these rooms. These are available, these are function rooms, so they're available for hire. The first one I'm going to show you is the Louis room. Oh, this is beautiful. And it's actually front facing, so you're looking out at the sea. You can't see much at the moment, but it's pointing out towards the Irish Sea. This is a beautiful room. Absolutely huge. What a beautiful room. Let I me mean, just look at that carpet. Just looking down this corridor, all these rooms, the signs all the way down, all these rooms are available for hire. And this room is called the Washington Suite. Well, there's one more room to show you, and that's the bar. It's actually called number 10, and it's obvious when you walk in, because the walls are covered with previous Prime Minister's names. And apparently, every single one of them has stayed in this hotel. Yeah, so a couple of years ago now, um, there once we were doing some renovations, and actually the whole ground, sub basement where we are now is like a catacombs of storerooms and all over the place. So at some point, just quite un unexpectedly, they, un they unearthed this, which is, if you go to the original picture, which I'll show you now, it was very, very ostentatious in its day. Um, if you look at these pictures here, and this is what it would have looked like originally. So you can imagine in the true Victorian era of this hotel, it would have been really, really special. Now, I don't know this for an absolute fact, but if you would have looked on the outside of the hotel, you see we're almost surrounded by a brick moat. Now, I'm told that they would have used the seawater that pulled in and the moat would have formed some part of that in order to bring the water through, in order to serve the baths. So it was quite an elaborate scheme, and I would say probably quite an in um, ingenuity, a bit of an engineering that went on there. So um, you'll see we've got the Civic Trust involved, as far as the restoration goes, there's no plans right now to take it up to any more than it is now. And sadly, we could never get them up and running again. That's just not one of those things that we could do. But it's a really nice throwback to history that we can show, I guess, how people used to live in the old days. Yeah. The bath itself, when you said about the yeah. pool, the seawater in, yeah. would that be on the same sort of principle as the tower? I think so. As I said, how it fills up as well. Correct, it? correct. Because, you know, if you think about it, when, when we were full tide, and actually, we, if you were to sit very on, our, on the ground level and you look out to where the, where the water comes to, we we're almost on the same level. So if you don't drop down to where we are now, because the ground's up there. They'd be like sea level. Correct, yeah. Yeah. So dynamically, it would have probably worked. Yeah. 
It must have been an incredibly good place to be. So this is the Churchill Room, which, as you can see, is very much uh, uh, indicative of the elegance of the 40s and the 50s, and everyone knows, obviously, it's called the Churchill Room for the reasons that Sir Winston would like to come and sit here and have his brandy and cigars. And if you've seen over here, you'll notice that there was a special bell put in for his purposes when he was sitting by the fire looking to press a bell for another brandy or cigar or whatever. So in days gone by, of course, the ceiling had a beautiful stained glass dome, which is sadly no longer there. We're not quite sure when, but at some point this press ceiling was put in place because it became a danger and I think it was removed. There also used to be a bar across there, so over time, of course, it's changed its use, but right now it's used for private dining. We do some lovely wedding ceremonies in here, um, and occasionally when we're really quiet in the hotel, we move our restaurant in here rather than sitting in a big cavernous room like our palm court. So it's a beautiful, beautiful room, and it's very much open for multi-use, but certainly without doubt, the spirit of Sir Winston, I think. I've just noticed on the wall um, a bill for Lady Churchill dated the 9th of October 1954 for a cocktail party she held at the hotel. And I'm just looking, some of the items they had was two whiskies, one Dubonnet, five Italian vermouths, four walnut brown squashes, one tomato juice, 10 cigarettes. Got that girl new out to party. Good morning. It's breakfast time. Um, it doesn't look very nice out there at all. I think I've probably picked the worst week to come to Blackpool. The wind has been horrendous all night long. If you just have a look out this window now, you can probably still hear it. And it started to team down as well. You just see the Blackpool Tower in the distance. Can you hear that wind? Yet, so I haven't picked the best day or the best week from the sounds of it. Apparently, later on in the week, it's going to snow around both Thursday. So, let's go down for breakfast. So it's time for my summary of my stay here at the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. Where do I start? When I approached the hotel yesterday on the promenade, the grandeur, the hotel itself, it just stands out, it's massive. And then you make that entrance into the foyer as you go towards the reception and you just go back in time, back to the Victorian era. The hotel was open to the public in 1857 and some celebrities have stayed here, from royalty to statesmen and even stars of the silver screen. And the evidence of that you can see in the hotel. There are pictures scattered of some of the most famous people that have stayed at this hotel. Um, Staff-wise, staff have been absolutely brilliant. Every single member of staff I've come across has either said good evening or good morning or even just said hello. The receptionist was brilliant. Booked in within seconds. Done straight away. Uh, the upgrade. Now this was it. The thing that's a little bit suspicious to me. Whenever I go to a hotel and I get upgraded straight away, I always wonder why. So I had to ask why I'd been upgraded. And apparently that's standard procedure at this hotel. Especially in the outer season months. It is February. Capacity at the hotel is very low. And it's evident that you can see that as you're walking around. There's not a lot of people staying here at the moment. So they upgraded me from a standard single room, which I booked, to a standard double room. Um, there are suites, but I wasn't upgraded to a suite. I've just been upgraded to the double room. And the reason for that is because they just basically like to give you a little bit more of uh, a luxury, a bit more space. That's the reason for the upgrade. Once I'd done my review of the room, 
I then went down and let the receptionist know that I was here to record a YouTube video. I don't normally do that, but because of the size and the scale of this hotel, I was hoping to gain access to rooms um, that I would not normally be able to walk around if I wasn't doing the recording for YouTube. So, um, and that did work, letting them know that I was here. Um, they gave me access, they gave me free access basically to most of the big function rooms. Otherwise I'd have probably been stopped if I was trying to record without them knowing. Uh, but they actually just gave me the free run of the hotel. Which tells me they've got nothing to hide. So I did show some of the function rooms that I could access. Um, and today I was greeted by the general manager. Um, who had been looking at my YouTube channel. And uh, I was told by a member of the staff last night that there is a Turkish bat in the lower ground. It's not open to the public. Um, and the sort of recovering that from, I don't know if this, it was a little bit of a story that they found it behind a wall, didn't know it was there. Um, whether that's true, I don't know. And the sort of like uncovering it. So it's gonna be eventually showed as a tour to the public. That's what I could work out. Anyhow, he took me on a little guided tour as you will hear his voice previously in the video, uh, doing a little bit of narration regarding the Turkish bats, the history of the Turkish bats. And um, uh, he also did the narration over the Churchill room. I just love buildings like this. I'd rather stay in a hotel like this rather than a modern hotel. That's just a square box. There's so much character. When you look around at the woodwork, you look at the, uh, the pillars, you look at the plaster work, the covens, it's just, there's so much character. The only thing I will say about the hotel is that there are a lot of drafts because they have the original sash windows, but they can't change them because it's a grade two listed building. But that didn't make the hotel cold. Uh, the heat and bill in this hotel must be a few bob because every room you go into is warm, even though there are a lot of drafts off the windows. Um, and it was a very, very blowy night last night. It's still raining now and the winds dropped slightly, but it was uh, 49 kilometers last night the wind was, and we are on the seafront. Right, the room itself, the bed, absolutely brilliant, but I've got to tell you, I didn't have a good night's sleep. Nothing to do with the bed, I had one of them nights where I couldn't get my mind to close down. I don't know why. I can't understand why I couldn't get to sleep. It was one of them nights where all kinds was getting thrown around my brain and I just couldn't settle. Nothing to do with the bed. The bed was really nice. Um, and I eventually slipped off about half past five this morning. But you know when you have one of them nights that you can't get to sleep for some reason? Don't know what it was. Uh, the room itself, bright, airy and clean. The hotel itself has been clean in general, looking round. You know, they must have an army of cleaners to keep on top of this hotel, because it's so big. Uh, those function rooms, the elegance of those function rooms are unbelievable. I have never seen function rooms that big. Every room that I showed you last night is available for hire to the public. My bathroom, really spotlessly clean. Plenty of hot water. Breakfast this morning, the breakfast was served different because it's out of season. Now, they did have a cold buffet, but the actual hot buffet wasn't served. They give you a tick list and they serve you the breakfast as you want it. So you tick off if you want sausage. Basically, you can have, it's like the buffet, but you just tick the boxes. The reason for that, I was told, because there's not many clientele staying, um, they don't want the food left out under the hot plates for hours and hours to dry up. So they cook it fresh as you want it, which is a better idea, I think. So basically, I ticked off everything I would have picked off the buffet anyhow, and they just brought that out on a plate. The, just, the staff in here are, are, are lovely, really nice staff. Every single one of them. You know, I've been in hotels where you, you can see the staff don't want to be there. These staff are just so nice. One more thing. Mobility scooters. You can bring a mobility scooter into the hotel. They do have a room set aside for mobility scooters where you can charge your mobility scooter. Uh, the Wi-Fi is free. Parking, I think, is £9 per night. Now, on to the thing you want to know, and that's the cost of the room. 
Now remember, I booked a single standard room. So I'm giving you the price for the single standard room first of all. I paid £52.70 bed and breakfast for a single standard room. But you can have this room, which is a double standard room, for two people, including breakfast, for just £71. So that's £35 per person per night. Location-wise, it's about 15 minutes walk from the tower north. Tram stop is right outside, so you don't have to worry about public transport. You can jump the tram outside if you want to go right along the prom to the south to the Pleasure Beach. Or, as I said, 15 minutes walk and you're at the tower. Do you like the look of this hotel? I just love old buildings. Would you stay at this hotel? What do you think of the price? What do you think of the breakfast? What do you think of the location? They're all questions I'm throwing at you. Put your comments down below. Let me know what you think. The main thing is, would you stay at this hotel? And do you think that price is okay? Now, I know you're going to say, well, the price is going to go up in the summer. That's life. Prices everywhere. doesn't matter if it's a train, a plane, anything. A hotel. All prices go up in the summer and especially during school holidays. So it's time for me to move on to the second hotel out of five hotels that I booked here in Blackpool. But this next hotel I wasn't meant to be staying at because last night I received a message to state that the hotel I should be staying in today has been cancelled. So I've had to rebook another hotel. I'll tell you more about that in the next video. So please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and of course that notification bell to keep you up to date with any future videos coming your way. I'm going to love you and leave you from me, Paul, as who knows where, here at the Imperial Hotel here in Blackpool. Thanks for watching and bye for now.